Hello, we are live with the community. This is the Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework bi-weekly sync. Today is November 30th, our last call of November. How did this happen? The year is just flying by. This is not Chris Kent, who you see as your host. This is actually David Warner. We've had a little bit of a juggling act today, but I'll tell you why right now. Our agenda is we're going to cover some community project updates. We're going to talk about SharePoint Framework, PNPJS, uh, CLI for Microsoft 365, uh, and a whole host of other things that we're going to talk about together today, reusable SVFX controls, uh, Viva Extension Toolkit, PNP Search, all kinds of good stuff. And then, of course, we're going to have our picture time. And while you may have been expecting to see Harmender and Hugo, H&H, &H, we're actually going to have HC, Harmender and Chris. So uh, Harmender is going to cover copy path and copy name list view command set extensions. And then Chris decided to jump in for a last minute demo. Uh, Hugo could not make it today. So we're going to enjoy a entertaining demo from Chris Kent. So we all look forward to that. But first, let's talk about what is available for you in the community? There is lots of resources. We've got plenty of videos. There's a LinkedIn group for discussions that you can collaborate with other members of the community in. We've got open source tooling that you're going to hear all about today. Like I mentioned, PNPJS, CLI for Microsoft 365, uh, Viva Connections Toolkit, so many great things. And of course, we've got our galactic universal bigger than life sample galleries and these are all made possible by folks like you that have contributed to the samples and they are all free and they span a wide spectrum of technology within microsoft so definitely go check them out uh, you can access all of this at aka.ms slash community slash home that is your one-stop shop for uh, everything in the community so take advantage of it it is all absolutely free now, you're on this call because, hey, you like community calls, right? So do we, and we've got plenty of them for you. Our Tuesday weekly calls is the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Microsoft Speakers Only Call. This is great because you get it directly from the mothership, so you hear from those program managers and product managers. Now, it is good to note that that is going to be on a break from the 20th of December to the 8th of January, giving everybody an opportunity to kind of rest and relax as we get into the end of the year. The first call will be on the 9th of January, so uh, while the invites won't get updated on your calendar uh, just know that there won't be calls on those weeks we of course have our weekly or excuse me monthly power platform community call that is on the third wednesday of every month we've got our office add-ins and then of our uh, bi-weekly sibling calls, which is one year on right now, the Viva Connection and SharePoint Framework, and Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community, which will happen next week. Uh, you can get access to all these calls at aka.ms slash community slash calls. Uh, you want to get the invites downloaded, put them on your calendar. These are fantastic to join, even if you're passively listening. It's, uh, I call it a crystal ball into what's new, what's now, what's next into the world of technology within Microsoft. So take advantage. And what might be coming up on that next Tuesday call, you ask? Well, it's funny you should ask. I've got an agenda slide for you. John Miller is going to be here to talk about what's new in Microsoft Teams Toolkit. Waldick and Gary are going to be here discussing Microsoft Graph Connectors, the easy way with Teams Toolkit. Do I see a theme here? I think I do, because Vess is going to be here talking about creating SBFX-powered team solutions in minutes with Teams Toolkit. So we've got an action-packed, totally tubular Teams Toolkit call in store for you. Yes, I said totally tubular. I'm old. All right. Now, you may think, I got some cool stuff to show off. I want to present on these calls. Guess what? You are more than welcome. Uh, don't feel like it needs to be anything that is earth shattering or ground shaking. Absolutely, if it is a feature or a function or a script or something that you found useful that helps you in your day-to-day -day job while using all this technology that we love, share it. And if you've never presented before, let us know. We'll buddy you up with someone on the team in the community. You'll work together. You'll craft the presentation and you'll present together. It'll give you that boost of confidence and comfortability that we know everyone deserves and enjoys. So take advantage of it. Absolutely, we welcome you. So please do not hesitate. If you have any questions, definitely come in and ask. Just reach out to any one of us and let us know. Now, we've got our uh, Sharing is Caring program starting to ramp back up. Uh, Hugo's in a new position, getting comfortable there. Uh, we're coming back from vacations and all that. And so we're taking some of this downtime to try to retool, get those videos out, office hours, getting those set up. Uh, this is my first week back from vacation. So be on the lookout for those office hours so that you can drop in and ask questions. And then we're going to provide you with some of those videos so you can kind of self-service some of the sessions that we cover. And then you'll have the best of both worlds. You'll see exactly how to walk through it. You'll be able to ask questions and we'll still continue to try to provide those longer safe space sessions where we walk you end to end within the uh, community and how to do things like 
create a GitHub pull request or how to work with those samples. So we want to make sure that we are here for you on that. Then once you do submit, well, we want to recognize you. Of course, our community recognition program is showcasing all of your contributions. It is powered by Credly. Uh, we've seen those samples getting shared on LinkedIn and, or, excuse me, those uh, slice of sample badges getting shared on LinkedIn, the season of getting on Twitter. All of them are available for the next couple of months. All you got to do is submit a sample, uh, modify a sample, or submit a contribution. Uh, we definitely encourage you. These are unique Git badges that are only available for these couple of months, November and December. But of course, we are always working on new ones. We're getting new ones set up for 2024. And I'll even give you a hint. Sebastian Levert and I were talking yesterday, and we're getting an MGT badge. So Microsoft Graph Toolkit, for all those Graph Toolkit fans, being on the lookout, that is going to be coming soon to a community near you. All right, let's get into our open source projects. Uh, and we're going to start out with PNPJS. And I think we're going to invite Bo. No, Julie's here. Julie is here. I am here, but Bo certainly could do it since he's been doing a lot of the work. Uh, and actually, this this release that uh, happened on uh, for November 20th for 3.20.1 was to reserve, revert a bug that we ended up with in the async iterator, which was meant for v4, ended up accidentally on v3 and broke graph paging. So we, we fixed that, or, or Bo fixed that really. And uh, otherwise, we're just deep in v4 work. So uh, you know, keep your eye on that. Uh, you can check out the V4 branch. There is an issue pinned so you can see what our plans are. Uh, so absolutely keep up to date on all that. That's all I have for today. Awesome. Thank you, Julie. Let's kick it over to Gary Trender on CLI for Microsoft 365. Thanks, David. Um, so CLI for Microsoft 365 uh, release V7. Um, Sorry, V7.2.0, as this is the latest release, we've got new commands uh, to help you manage uh, Microsoft Entra ID. Uh, so this is administrative units, so you can add, get, list, and remove. So we've got all those commands for you to manage those, uh, those admin units. Uh, we've also got new commands to update the Microsoft 365 profile cards as well. So this is customizing uh, you know, those cards that you see around M365, uh, being able to add um, and uh, and manage those uh, profile card properties uh, across M365. And we've got the usual updates for SharePoint Framework. So we now have um, SharePoint Framework uh, version 1.18.2 support added to our uh, various um, uh, project uh, commands, uh, including the upgrades to make that easier for you to uh, upgrade all of your projects. And we've also got a update to a SharePoint online command as well that you can now create a site with an app catalog without actually having to do multiple uh, commands. So a nice convenience update uh, for you there. Uh, if you want to get the latest version, you can get that from NPM using the uh, at latest uh, tag. You can also uh, get the version from Docker as well. If you don't want to install it, you want to run it in a Docker container, um, then you can use the at latest tag there. Um, there's much more updates, uh, so the usual kind of bug fixes and improvements across all of uh, CLI for Microsoft 365. Uh, to get those details, do check out the release notes at aka.ms, uh, cli-m365 slash notes. And if you are wanting to get involved in the community, please join our Discord uh, server as well, where you'll find uh, lots of people discussing uh, the CLI, how to use it, what commands are available, and also what we can add. Um, so please, uh, if you're interested, do go and join. Uh, next slide. Okay, uh, dev proxy. Uh, so we have a uh, release uh, coming. Uh, so V13 is not quite ready just yet. It's actually going to come next week. We were planning to do it this week, but uh, we have all been out at a particular conference in Europe. Um, so this is going to be coming uh, next, early next week. So do look out for the uh, release announcements. Um, but what is new is going to be exactly the same. So we have a new name. Uh, so we're no longer Microsoft 365 developer developer proxy. We are dev proxy. Uh, we also have new docs. Uh, so we have moved our documentation out of the wiki and into Microsoft Learn. Um, so uh, if you are interested in contributing to those docs as well, like you do with Microsoft Learn docs, uh, then 
please, uh, you know, uh, raise issues, pull requests. We'll be really interested. Um, but what's coming in the next version? Uh, two major updates. The ability to inspect the requests that go through the proxy through the Chrome developer tools. Uh, the Chrome developer tools, the tools that you will already be using, uh, using web development, being able to inspect the, the network requests and, and find the the uh, the, the details of, of these requests and the responses from proxy is going to be a great uh, um, developer experience update. Um, we've also got a new plugin as well that is coming uh, that will help you uh, make sure that uh, you're using uh, the uh, the SharePoint search uh, features uh, in, in a way um, that uh, that suits best practice. Um, so we have general bug fixes as well that are, that are coming. Um, and next uh, things that we're looking for uh, is we're going to look at how we can simulate uh, small, uh, medium, large, and extra large tenants as well. So you can uh, see how your application uh, is going to handle uh, those uh, running in different environments and we're looking at um, January for the next major release. Uh, David, back to you. Awesome. And I, I'm, I'm guessing, Gary, that's January 2024, right? <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> so Good look shout. for that, everybody. Unless Gary's got a time travel, a flux capacitor, and he's uh, you know, going to go back in time, and, and which I wouldn't be surprised. CLI, it's pretty I powerful. wish I did. You know? <laughs> awesome. All right. Let's move on to reusable SPFX controls with Alex. Thank you, David. So we finally released new versions. It's 3.16.0 for React controls and 3.15.0 for uh, property controls, uh, many updates for React controls. We have two new components, view picker and uh, hover reactions uh, bar. We have a lot of uh, enhancement there for different types of controls, different various uh, bug fixes and uh, support for 118.2 for both uh, solutions. What it basically means, now you can use our libraries in uh, Node.js v18 as well which is pretty cool. And uh, as usual, thank you to all our contributors. Uh, the libraries are great just because of you. Uh, that's all I have. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, let's kick it over to Adam on Vive Connections Toolkit. Yeah, thanks, David. So we've just released a new minor release of the Viva Connections Toolkit 2.4 just yesterday. And uh, release blog post is underway. Uh, I doze off <laughs> and uh, woke up today morning. So it's it's in the build process and probably will be published today. Uh, but anyway, uh, this new release uh, brings support for the v, uh, SPFX v1.18.2 and more better seamless integration with Teams Toolkit. So like a better together kind of features and more of those details will be in the upcoming release post. Also, now the Viva Connections Toolkit will analyze if one of the components in your SPFX projects is maybe an ACE. And if it is so, it will suggest to install the uh, Microsoft ACE Previewer extension to give you additional boost. And we had some small improvements in the CI CD GitHub action that will now, when you will be generating this, um, when you will be using this action to generate your CI CD GitHub workflow with uh, deploying your uh, package to the site collection, uh, site level app catalog, then it will pr actually present you the list of all of site, site app catalogs you have on, your, on the tenant you're connected to, instead of uh, like before you had to type it yeah, by heart. If you want to ch uh, check out this solution and install, you can install directly from the marketplace. Check out our repo, is the aka.ms slash viva slash VS code, and give it for sure a try. Thanks a lot, and back to you, David. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Adam. Uh, I was, you just said you dozed off. I was thinking you should start saying, telling people you're hibernated. You, you changed your system settings to Adam. Never mind. All right. Okay. Let's move on. PNP Modern Search. So uh, office hours are available courtesy Casper Larson. So definitely check that out. It's a great way to ask some questions on areas that you might want to get involved with on search. Uh, V4.10 is being worked on uh, slowly. We know it's that time of year. So definitely be on the lookout there. But there's always uh, great opportunities. Search is a fantastic tool. So take advantage of it. 
Uh, Hugo would normally be here to talk about SPFX samples. I know he was processing a lot of them, uh, but again, something came up and he had to step away. Uh, so definitely keep submitting those. He said hello to everybody uh, and wants to let you know he is working on those uh, and we'll get them updated. We'll cover all of those contributions on the next call. So thank you, everybody, but uh, definitely keep submitting those. Same for ACES. So uh, Derek and Anoop are unable to be here today, but they did say, please, 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 we love samples. So definitely get them submitted. Uh, reach out to any of them, uh, Anoop or Derek or Hugo, if you have any questions on any of the SPFX samples, uh, we would love to assist you in getting set up. All right, well, it is everybody's favorite time, picture time. So let's turn on those cameras and let's hope Together Mode works today. Uh, let's see if we can get that to work. And uh, it is still not load. Oh, there we go. All right, finally, there we go, perfect. All right, let me get everything set up here. Still plenty of room while Camtasia is continuing to load. Get that moved off the screen. All right. See if we, uh, that's funny actually we say, there we go. Winter's coming, it's getting a little darker so we'll use auditorium dark. So it's a little blurry today. The interwebs, not that great. Plenty of room still. If everybody wants to join the camera, we'll give you another second or two. If you would like to turn on your camera, plenty of spaces, you know, this room dynamically grows. So there's plenty of seats. There we go, a few more, still some more coming in. Give it one more second. There we go. Looking fantastic. All right. Set the timer. And all right, let's give everybody a wave. Show them how awesome you are in the community. You got to do the, you know, the dance. Woo. Looking fantastic. Really, really good. Okay. All right. Let us continue to progress. We are going to move on to our two amazing presenters of the day. So uh, we're going to begin with Harminder on copy path and copy name list view command set extensions. So Harminder, feel free to uh, take on over the screen share and begin. Thanks, David. I hope my screen is visible. It is showing up. Yep, perfect. So today I'm going to sh uh, showcase the demo for the copy path and copy name list view command set extensions, which is going to help in some way. Like sometimes what happens is we normally want a list or a document path, but we get a encrypted form of the link. And the other is uh, in case if we want to get the name of the document, we have to use the rename option. So just to avoid these two things, I have created these two extensions. But before the demo, uh, here is the quick intro. My name is Harminder Singh. I'm working as a M365 technical specialist at Nagaro in India. And these are my handles where you can connect with me and I'll be happy to uh, get more ideas of what we can implement with the help of SPFX. And in case if someone is facing issue with the SPFX, then I'll be happy to help that one as well. So I quickly move to the uh, demo. The first one is copy path. Normally what happens is uh, out of the box, we get this copy link option. And if we click on this copy link, we get this uh, a model window, I would say. And this copy option gives us a URL, which is kind of uh, encrypted, I would say, because it has some special characters, but sometimes what happens is we need a direct path. So in case if we need to get that path, we have to go to the details, scroll down a bit, and there it is, the path is available. And I got this idea from the user voice form uh, where it was mentioned by some of the users that they need a, a flexibility to get this option uh, maybe in this uh, toolbar. So uh, then I created this one, which simply copies the path and gives this notification. This notification is based upon the Fluent UI 9 TOS notification. And if we see, it gives us the complete path of the document. And the other one is the copy name. Now, if we want to copy the name of this document, then we normally go to the rename option. 
then we select it, then hit control C, then close it. So it includes multiple steps. So just to remove these steps, we can simply click on copy name and it gives us the name with the extension. So that was a demo from the implementation perspective. It's a very uh, simple project, I would say, where I created two command set extensions. The copy name and the copy path. The icon image URL consists of the uh, encoded SVG and the ID I got from Hugo uh, tool. He has created one tool to get the encoded SVG icon for the Fluent UI icons, which we normally use. And also from one of our community, con community contributor, Dan, uh, which has created a blog post, how we can create a list view extension icons, which can take the color from the applied theme on the SharePoint sites. From the code perspective, uh, I get this get theme color, which is a kind of service. And uh, in the service, I have this theme helper.ts, which gets the currently applied theme. And based upon that, uh, I get the color. And then initially, the, both the icons are set to uh, false for the visible property. And it gets enabled only when we have a single document selected. So both the icons get selected at that point of time. And when we execute it in the own execute method, uh, I copy the value uh, using navigator.clipboard, which is again uh, out of the box uh, library from the JavaScript side. And this file leaf reference, uh, this provides the name of the document and this file reference provides the complete path. So I uh, read the values of these two properties and then pass uh, this is copied method just to just to know if uh, the copy functionality is completed or not. If yes, then I uh, show a toast message, which again I added in a common folder so that in case in future if I need to add more functionality in this solution either as a web part or as an extension I can use this one so in this toast message I am simply showing the toast message and the intent is like if it is success then it shows the toast message accordingly and uh, one last thing is that once it is executed I'm raising this un mount component at node so that this uh, react control will be unmounted from the dom and it, it will be again uh, called in case if i click on one of the extension so that was uh, all from this demo perspective and the implementation perspective if uh, anyone is having any suggestion how we can improve or add new uh, functionality, then uh, we can discuss that out. Back to you, David. Awesome, Harmony. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of chat about uh, wondering why why are things like this not already built into SharePoint? But, you know, Microsoft does have a limited capacity, and, and it's great that we have an extensibility opportunity like this uh, for folks in the community to find easy ways to influence and improve and add enhancements. So thank you for doing this and sharing it with us. I pasted the link to your sample in the chat for everybody, and we'll put it in the notes for those that are watching this on demand. Uh, but really appreciate you sharing this with us uh, and submitting the sample. Uh, um, and presenting it on the call. Really, really great thanks. stuff, so thank you. Thanks, David. All right, well, uh, ready or not, Chris Kent, it is time for some list formatting magic. So Ooh. feel free to. <laughs> list formatting? I don't know what you're talking about, because uh, I thought this was an SPFX call, so uh, I've done an SPFX demo. All right. Even better. Here we go. Wow, 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 there's me, I'm Chris. Wow, here we go. Okay. So this is uh, the demo I made about an hour ago. Uh, I'm lying, I finished it about three minutes ago. <laughs> Very exciting. But uh, here's our little guy. Uh, he's made of icons. Uh, you know, so these are made of the Fluent UI icons. Uh, it's very exciting. 
Uh, we're in the preview mode right now, so we've got something set up where we hit edit, right? We've got these two uh, little buttons, right? And we can hit head, right? And that loads a different head icon, right? Or a different body and so on, right? And that's pretty cool. Um, and let's take a look at some of the code. And then we're going to talk about how we can improve some things. Because uh, one of the things before we look at the code, actually, I want to see, I've got one property here where I can imitate Bo Cameron's code. Right. Uh, so the idea is I've got these lists. Right. So I've got a bodies list here, which has these icons, and I've got a heads list right here. And this is what's informing, uh, you know, what's going on here when I hit these buttons. So if I want to imitate Bo Cameron's code, uh, you know, ironically I'm using PMPJS. So you know, whatever. All right. So let's refresh this thing, and so now we'll see uh, that we have this. Uh, delay of about three seconds, uh, just like uh, anything Bo makes, right? Uh, very unperformant, and that's the kind of thing we got. So let's take a look at what's happening there and how we can take a look at a pattern that I think could help you. Okay, so this is just a web part uh, that has no framework, right? So there's no React, none of that other stuff, right? So it's just a standard JavaScript, and it's pretty ugly because, again, I made it this morning. So let's take a look what we got. So we got a couple of properties hey, Chris. here. Yeah. Uh, could you scale up the fonts? Bo, Bo would use a bigger font, uh, by the way. Oh, so just. Yeah. Um, well. All right. I got nothing for that. Is that this? Here we go. How, <laughs> how's you. that? Is that Perfect. better? <laughs> that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty good. All right. That's pretty good right there. Okay. There we go. go yeah, that's good. Perfect. Okay, Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go out here. So now we come down here and we have this idea of, right, we're just storing things as strings. So I'm just going to go over this and we'll talk about how to make this a little better. Right, so we've got this idea. We've got you know our array of strings, which is just going to be that title property, which is the icon name. Um, it wasn't obvious because I did apply a format. Well, if I could find that window um, on this list, right? But if we actually say uh, format this column, we say all I'm really doing is I'm swapping in that icon name, right? So if we were to, and that was just so I made sure I typed the icon right. So you can see we're actually just typing in the name of the icon. That's actually what this field is: is the name of the icon. I've just again I put this here. Uh, to make it easier for me to see it here inside the list. So there's a, a list format demo for free. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. And all of these I pulled from, uh, you know, the Fluid UI icon. So you can go to flycon.io uh, right here, and you could find all these icons here. So, for instance, for all the faces, I just went to emoji, and there they are. Right? And so you can see they're named sad <laughs> and emoji and so on. And that's what I've got in this list of heads. And we've got something similar for the bodies list as well, right? So bodies has the same format. It just has different icons, which are from the shapes category. All right. So that's what's going on there. But if we take a look at the code, then uh, you can see really all we have is a div and a bunch of icons here. Uh, just trust me, these are the styles that are required for the icons. And then these are the styles that are I'm absolutely positioning all those little body parts. Uh, top notch code there. Woo! But the idea here is right, we're swapping in and out based on our stored property, uh, what this is. And that's pretty cool, right? And then we're, if we're in display mode, right? We're detecting that, we're adding those buttons or not, right? And then later we're hooking them up down here with our event listeners and so on. And so, and then if we come on down here, right, we've got these change head and change body. Uh, you know, again, those are just arrays. So all we're really doing is incrementing to the next one of the array. It's a really ugly way of just saying, go to the next one and so on. Same with the body. And all we're really, the key part is this, right? This properties body icon and the properties head icon. We're just updating those properties in our property bag. Wow, we Now, and then down here, we have this thing called long load, right? And the reason it's long load is because I'm taking into uh, account uh, that Bo Cameron's code, right? Where we're really just arbitrarily waiting, you know, three seconds before we actually load our stuff. Now, the loading stuff down here, um, I'm not doing any batching. I, could, there's, I do not do any caching, right? We can do a lot of stuff to make this even more performant. Uh, you know, take a look at that stuff. We've got lots and lots of samples on how to do that with PMPJS. Um, and if you're not using PMPJS, it does. Uh, what's wrong with you? Go and use it. It's awesome. All right. Uh, but the idea is here, I'm just awaiting those things, right? So I'm getting everything from the heads list and everything from the bodies list. And I'm just slapping the title into that array, right? Boom. And then I'm re-rendering this thing because it's not a reactor. I don't have any property and that kind of stuff like that. So that's it. Load the stuff. Uh, this is some fancy stuff I was doing just to do some uh, style stuff. You can look at that later. All right, but down here, so that's what's going on. So a common pattern, so that's the setup. So a common pattern is, hey, I need to load some stuff from a list, right? Or I need to load some stuff from an API or wherever I need to go do some kind of process, right? I need to go grab that stuff. 
and I want to you know show the load user that I'm loading stuff. So maybe I use the loading indicator, or I get a little fancy and I you know get a little GIF in there, whatever it is, right? And maybe I'm saying, well, in my init, right, I'm going to go ahead and grab my loading thing. I'm just going to go ahead and catch that. Maybe I've got some promises, and so on. And when that happens, right, that gets run at the end. It's going to re-render, and we're going to have all our stuff, and it's going to be fancy. But here's the the scenario we've got. Right, we only care about loading stuff from the heads and the bodies list when you're in the edit mode. Right, there's no point in loading this stuff. We've got this arbitrary three second delay right on our load, but imagine we really do have some kind of expensive operation where we're calling, you know, uh, an elaborate API, we're pulling a bunch of things in, and all of that's just for that edit experience, right? You know, maybe we're doing something with the property pane, but maybe we're not, right? We're doing that inline editing experience, we're getting real fancy, and that's cool, but when we're on the page, we don't need to load any of that stuff, right? So how can we make that just a little better? Well, let's take a look at it on a page first. See it not so great. All right, so let's go to a page. There we go, here's a page where I've got it on there. There we go, there's the little guy down there. You know, we load this thing and we've got the uh, the bow camera delay. All right, so it's, but we're not editing anything, right? So there was no point to that delay. Why did we load that stuff? Um, if we're not actually editing, right? We already know what we want to display here. We've got it in the properties. And the nice thing about storing that stuff in the property bag is that's just going to load up with your web part right on the page, right? There's no extra calls. It just comes in there and SharePoint Framework is going to handle handling all of that to you. Um, and you see realizing that out of the property bag, and that's cool, right? That's fancy stuff. So you want to take advantage of that, right? You don't want to necessarily load things every time. Uh, maybe just load things when people are editing and you need to go grab that data and you can use that property bag almost as a cache. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go back to our code, which is one of these, this one. All right. And if we go up here, here's that key part of the code I mentioned here, right? That we talked about where the loading. So we're saying, all right, if it's not defined yet, all right, then we're saying display the loading indicator, and then we're not doing any of the rest of this, right? And then what we're doing here is because we have that in our initialization down here, right, where we're actually loading it. Right, that's what's taking forever, so it's waiting for those three seconds before it ever stops showing. You know, it's going to re-render again, and then it's going to clear that out. Right, it's going to clear that loading indicator. All right, everybody with me? All right, good. So what we're saying is, hey, if you don't have these backing, uh, you know, objects here, I want you to, you know, show the loading thing, which is a good idea. But again, we don't need to do that if we're not editing. So let's change this slightly. Right, instead of loading things every time, let's do this a little more dynamically. All right, so instead here, we're going to say, you know, let's put that in parentheses. I'm going to say either of those are undefined, but we only care if the this dot display mode, all right, equals equals display mode dot edit, right? So only if we're in edit and only if these things are undefined show the, the indicator, right? And that's cool. Uh, but obviously this is, is not great because we're still actually doing the work behind the scenes because we're doing the initialization. So let's go down here. Let's say, well, you don't need to be there, bud. Get out of there. That's crazy. All right, we'll just get rid of that and we'll come back up here and we'll just stick that right here. We'll say, hey, only load it, uh, you know, if you don't have the data yet, right? And you uh, are in display mode, go load this. Now we could do some stuff here where we might want to check, you know, are we loading and so on. And again, you know, this is a, a quick and dirty uh, example of how we're just delaying and doing dynamic loading here, but let's try it. So let's save that guy and let's see what difference we made on our page. Go back to our page. You'll remember that this has the uh, three second delay. So if we refresh this, oh, instantly loaded. Woo. But if we edit the page, we should see we have our arbitrary loading going on. So that's pretty exciting. So now what we've done is, right, we're only, and let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, get out of your bow, gosh. All right, so now it's gonna be fast either way because really loading from list is not fast and I don't mean to imply that it's not, right? So PMJS is extremely fast, especially if you have that batching and that caching, but not all of your other stuff's gonna be that fast. Okay, so let's review this because uh, apparently we've got a whole heck of a lot of time, but that's okay. We're not gonna <laughs> delay this too much. Uh, what we did here, uh, to be clear, is we took our loading logic, right? And instead of doing the classic in our initialization where we're loading this regardless of what the state of the web part is or the state of the page, uh, we're deciding to do that based on the state of the page. And we get that from this display mode uh, property that's on your web part. 
All right, and you're going to be able to check that against the enumeration, which is coming from uh, right here. So in the core library, you're just going to make sure you import that display mode. That allows you to say that display mode dot edit, and you're going to compare against that. And this opens up all sorts of interesting scenarios, right? To to change how your web part renders, uh, what it loads. You know, you could dynamically load styles and other uh, libraries and things you need only in that edit mode, which really allows you to have that nice, clean, performant uh, view. So we're doing something very similar. Uh, oh, good. What's that? Someone unmuted? Hi. Okay, cool. Well, so we're doing something in, uh, similar in terms of like a real example of this. So we've got uh, the idea of trying to show our own page properties as a web part uh, because we wanted to really control how those page properties looked. So what we've done is we've created a web part very similar to this. And what it does is it pulls all the things it wants to display out of the property bag. But when you edit the page, we actually refresh the property bag from the properties of the page. Right, so that allows us to quickly pull those things in, but only have to pull that data uh, when you're editing the page. And for everybody else, it's just uh, very, very fast uh, and pulls all that data in. And it's a really cool pattern. Uh, and that's all I've got for this pattern. I will try and wrap this up as a sample and get it over to Hugo and see if he can put it up in the, uh, the web part gallery so everyone else can draw their own little icon man. And that's it for me, David. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Well, you know, since we do have time, uh, could you also do it uh, in two other languages? Uh, yeah, let me uh, let me just get that copilot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, no, but seriously, um, what are some of the ways that you see this being used in like a, maybe a business case scenario? I'm sure you probably have had something in mind since you kind of created this so fast. Probably had some sort of use case in mind that it could be applied to for folks that are watching and saying, "Well, my bosses may not need a stick man, but they may need something that could do what?" Yeah, well, let's see if I can pull this up for you then. Uh, one second here. I don't think uh, anyone will mind if I pull this up. All right, let's take a look here. So internally, we're doing quite a bit you know, with AI, as is everybody. Right? We're all trying to experiment with this. And one of the things we've got is this idea of a community site where we're sharing prompts. right? So we have this idea of sharing prompts. Um, so this one's just a Microsoft form. We also have this as a, a list and an email where you can put this. But then you just provide a title and you provide a prompt. Right, um, you know. So let's try one. Let's say uh, the title of my prompt is "Demo Prompt." You know, make a song about David Warner being a tiny chicken. That sounds like a great thing, right? Obviously, I will delete that later. <laughs> uh, but what happens here uh, behind the scenes, and this is why this is practical uh, for or relevant for this, is we've got some flows and things, and they're going to go contact you know Azure Open AI. Um, and they're going to try and improve that prompt, and they're going to bring back all these stuff, and it's going to generate these pages. Now, it may take a little longer than we've got on this call, but uh, we'll see if that one comes back. In the meantime, right, we can take a look at, uh, you know, productivity boosting our meeting template. That sounds exciting, right? So we have this meeting template, um, and what's happening here is we've got a few different things on this page that look like web parts, right? Well, they are web parts, but they are actually, um, well, they're actually web parts, but Instead of using the markdown web part, we had all sorts of trouble with that, right? So we wanted to use our own version of that, but we wanted to pull this data from the page properties, right? So if we look at our page details here, uh, we actually have uh, all of the information showing up on the page here as page properties, right? That allows us to, to search it, to get everything, to organize these in other ways we want to display that. But then we have this is, is a pretty simple web part. And all it's doing is it's looking at the current page it's on using the context. And when you're in edit mode, it actually goes and grabs those relevant uh, pieces of metadata from the page, stores those in the property bag. And so that way, when you're displaying this page, right, it just knows exactly what it should display. And it just shows it all here. And we can do all the things we want with our SPFX display. Um, and the fact that it's on multiple pages we means we also have the power to add other web parts, right, as needed. But we can keep this uh, same kind of look and feel um, across things, and when we want to update those, right? It's not going to every page and updating those. It's not using the ugly page properties out of the box web part. No offense to Microsoft, uh, but that thing is ugly, right? And you could do things. Uh, I think I maybe even showed an example of doing something similar with list formatting, but I find this is a very nice pattern uh, for doing this. But again, that's one pattern, uh, but there's all sorts of cases where you're going to want to edit your web part and provide that editing experience where you're going to be loading stuff. You really there's no point in loading that on a standard user experience. You got to be a good citizen in the context of a page, right? We're not writing always, well, sometimes we are, 
you know, single page applications. We're writing tiny little widgets that have to play nice with everything else, right? And that includes being performant and quick, um, especially when there's, you're not really doing anything, right? If you're just displaying stuff, don't do all that extra junk. That's uh, that's what I'd say. If we go back, let's see if we can, uh, I'll just republish. I'm sure I did great things to that page. All right, let's see if we got our, our prompt back. Ah, uh, not yet. That's too bad. Uh, so the idea, well, if we go to site pages, maybe we'll have it here because that'll be fun just to see if it uh, returned our David Warner song. Ah, Community Prompt 2, that's from August 22nd, so that's probably it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Come on, man, you could do it. Ah, oh, we don't have it here. All right, well, either way, that's actually an interesting demo all on its own is taking a look at some of this stuff and how we built uh, these pieces. Um, and so I will leave that for another time when we need to pull a demo out at the last minute. <laughs> oh, maybe this, maybe this is a meeting template 46. We'll see, did I call it that? No, that, oh, that's the one I just edited. <laughs> okay, well, that's the idea, but do you, does that answer your question, David, about when you might use this kind of pattern? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it helps provide some some context there. So yes, very good. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Uh, and and by the way, small chicken. I, I prefer Gornish Game Hen. By the way, it just sounds cooler. I think. Uh, it's just basically the same thing, bro. It, it sorta, yeah. You know. no, I don't really know. <laughs> as long as People it's ask, a yeah, bird yeah. and you're you're eating it, that's America. I don't I don't know what I'm talking. About. Okay. <laughs> Turkey. Right, let's wrap this up before. <laughs> Something we really regret. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for tuning in to this call today. Thank you, Harminder and Chris, for uh, pitching in at the last minute. Uh, really appreciate all that you bring to the community. Uh, let's talk about some other ways that you can get involved. We've got a community uh, feedback form that we'd like to hear from you on. So please give us feedback on maybe not this call, but maybe the rest of the calls. Take into account the whole spectrum of calls, everybody. Uh, but we really appreciate getting the feedback. It allows us to let our management know <clears throat> that the calls are appreciated and are valuable to you in the community. Also, we've got our community Discord server up and running. Uh, it is absolutely free. You've got hundreds and hundreds of community members that have now been joining. Uh, it's a great kind of one-stop shop to be able to collaborate and communicate with all members of the community on a variety of topics in one place. So definitely check that out. We've got a number of things we're adding in as well. Uh, some APIs we're calling in and some really, really cool things uh, in store there that trying to get done over the break. The recording will be available in 24 hours on the Microsoft 365 Power Platform Community YouTube channel. You can access those at aka.ms slash community slash videos. Definitely go in and subscribe to those channels because when you see teams tell you that the recording is available, it is not telling you the truth. It is only available to Microsoft employees and FTEs. So uh, if you try to download it, it's going to end in sadness and tears uh, and small chickens apparently. So definitely get uh, subscribed and it'll be alerted as soon as it is available. You can also follow us on Twitter at Microsoft 365 Dev or at M365 PNP. Our next VP Connections and SPFX call is December 14th, two, week, uh, two weeks from today. And our next M365 Power Platform call is next week, December 7th. Both of them at 7 a.m. Pacific. Definitely check out all the calls at aka.ms slash community slash calls. Uh, with that, we will give you a little time back left in your day, but we appreciate everyone and nice. all you're doing in the community. Oh, wow. Chris Look is taking over. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're doing to, this, to everybody. Your song. No, I did not. Uh, I didn't review this, but uh, it's probably safe. You know. Anyway, I just <laughs> sure. wanted to show uh, how all that worked. In other words, we saved these page properties, right? And they showed back up. I just wanted to show all that working together, right? So we've got SPFX working with our Power Automate working with. Uh, we actually have a PVA bot back behind this. I mean, uh, Copilot, Mini Cop, whatever the heck they're called, right? Uh, back behind the scenes. So I just want to show that as well that it does work. And David is a tiny chicken, and he's quick on his feet with a fiery spirit. As we all know. All right. Oh boy. Woo! All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the breaking news, everybody. I've got a fiery spirit. All right. Excellent. Well, Chris, thank you for ending it as only Chris can. Have a wonderful rest of the week, everybody, and a wonderful weekend. See you next week.